Hello students, welcome to today's video on Pelton turbine. In this video, we will going to study about the construction and working of a Pelton turbine, the various parts associated with the Pelton turbine. So let's start the video. So the Pelton wheel or also called as the Pelton turbine, it is a tangential flow impulse turbine. The water strikes the buckets along the tangent of the runner. So in Pelton turbine, the water strikes the buckets of the runner or the buckets of the turbine in a tangential direction. Hence it is a tangential flow turbine and also it is a impulse turbine. So the impulse turbine utilizes the energy available at the inlet of the turbine as the kinetic energy. The pressure at the inlet and outlet of the turbine is atmospheric. Hence, there is only conversion of kinetic energy into the mechanical energy and no pressure energy is involved. And this turbine is also used for high heads. Means, to make this turbine operational, we need a high head water reservoir. And this turbine is named after an American engineer, Hale Pelton. Hence the name Pelton Turbine. The figure shows that the layout of the hydroelectric power plant in which the turbine is a Pelton wheel. The water from the reservoir flows through the penstock at the outlet of which nozzle is fitted. The nozzle increases the kinetic energy of the water flowing through the penstock at the outlet of the nozzle. The water comes out in the form of jet and strikes the buckets of the runner. The main parts of the Pelton turbines are the nozzle and the flow regulating arrangement, the runner and the bucket, the casing and the braking jet. So the Pelton turbine is basically consists of these four parts. So we will study these four parts one by one. The first part is the nozzle and the flow regulating arrangement. The amount of water striking the buckets or also called as the vents of the runner is controlled by providing the spear in the nozzle arrangement as shown in this figure. We can see there is a spear, this is a spear and this spear location is controlled by rotating this wheel means by using this wheel we can forward or backward this spear and this spear is located at the nozzle exit so by forwarding and backwarding this spear we can control the cross sectional area at the exit of this nozzle and consequently we can control the flow of the water When the spear is pushed forward into the nozzle, the amount of water striking the runner is reduced. And on the other hand, if the spear is pushed back, the amount of water striking the runner increases. So pushing this nozzle forward reduces the cross sectional area at the exit of the nozzle, hence reducing the amount of water which is striking the runner. And vice versa, when this spear is pushed back, the amount of water striking the runner increases as the area of the cross section of the nozzle increases. The next part is the runner and the bucket. So in this diagram we can see there is a runner. The whole assembly is called as the runner and the buckets are we can see on the outer periphery. So these buckets are basically mounted on the circular disc on the periphery of which a number of buckets evenly spaced are fixed. These buckets are evenly spaced and mounted on the periphery of the disc. The shape of the bucket is of the double hemispherical cup or bowl type. Each bucket is divided into two symmetrical parts by dividing wall which is also known as the splitter. So these buckets are made up made up of two double hemispherical cup or bowl 
and these two are separated by a dividing wall which is also called as splitter so the function of the splitter is to divide the jet into two equal parts so this splitter what does it do the splitter divides the jet which is striking on this bucket into two equal parts the one jet comes out, comes out from the one hemispherical bowl and the other one comes out of the second hemispherical bowl the third part is the casing the function of the casing is to prevent the splashing of the water and to discharge the water to the tail rest so in this diagram we can see there is a penstock there is a spear arrangement for flow regulation there is a nozzle jet of water this is turbine and this whole assembly is enclosed in a casing so casing is basically used to prevent the splashing of the water at this whole assembly there is a water which is striking at a very high velocity on the buckets there is a splashing is present and to prevent this splashing of the water there is a casing it also acts as a safeguard against accident and also as these are the moving parts with high velocity it also safeguards against the accidents and it is generally made up of the cast iron or fabricated steel plates the next part is the braking jet so when the nozzle is completely closed by the moving spear in the forward direction the amount of water striking the runner reduces to zero so in this the nozzle is completely closed by moving this spear in the forward direction so the water which is striking on the bucket of the runner reduces to zero but due to inertia what happens the runner goes on revolving and to stop this runner in a shorter time there is a small nozzle is provided which directs the jet of the water on the back of the vents means on the opposite side of the vents this small nozzle imparts a jet of the water which reduces the motion of this runner and make it stop hence this is also called as the braking jet so this is the construction and working of the pelton turbine for more videos like this you can watch departmental youtube channel chhrim jalgaon